Oh, oh, patrol, patrol, get out of the way. Go to the left, go to the left. Fuck. We have bombs? Bombs? Oh, oh my god. Warhammer and the Vermintide Times, in that order, is a game that caught my interest earlier in the year, and I didn't really expect much of because after only 16 seconds into the trailer I thought, Is that Dark Souls 2 guy? But more importantly, the very first blatant statement that you, me, or pretty much anybody else would make about watching this gameplay for the first time is, It's just a Left 4 Dead reskin, right? And the answer to that question is... Sorta? Well, it does have both similar concepts and gameplay elements from games like Left 4 Dead, or say, even Payday 2. It really isn't just another clone. I like to think of it more as an homage, or maybe even an evolution of the games that came before it. I'll start off with the most notable point, which is the combat. Vermintide primarily has a lot more emphasis and depth put into its melee combat. Getting up close and personal with Skaven, cutting off their limbs, smashing in their skulls, cutting them clean in half. It all just feels meatier and really satisfying. So why is that a big deal? I mean, Left 4 Dead has a melee combat. What makes Vermintide better? In Left 4 Dead, when you have a melee weapon, all you could really do was spam attacks with left mouse button or right click to shove zombies away. In Vermintide, you can spam left click to quickly attack Skaven, or you can hold down left click to charge up and perform a heavy attack. Wow, a whole other attack, so deep. Additionally, Holding down the right mouse button will cause you to block attacks, and if you click left mouse button while you're holding down right mouse button, then you can shove Skaven back with a push. You can also perform dodges at any time by jumping backwards or to the left or right. So when you combine dodging, blocking, pushes, light and heavy attacks together, oh, it's just awesome. Swerving in and out of attacks, blocking at just the right moment, and then decapitating a big old rat, mm, oh, it just feels so good. And the combat animations look really great too. So when you hit something, it provides this really nice visual feedback based on the direction of your attack. It's pretty much just like porn. Whereas every single time I smack something with my big sword in Vermintide, it's like the same feeling I get when I stroke my dick at the same time the one on the screen goes in and out. It's very immersive. I think by far, Vermintide has got some of the best first person melee combat I've ever played around with. In most first person games, Melee combat usually feels gimmicky or tacked on, and it really only feels implemented for the sake that people expect it to be there. Oh, and of course, the game has ranged weapons as well. But the main thing you're really gonna care about is hitting things with a big ol' hammer or cutting them up with swords. And you're gonna be hitting a lot of rats in this game, of all different shapes and sizes. They got big rats, small rats, sneaky rats, stinky rats, grabby rats, all of them with their own bullshit to deal with. Sometimes they'll make you laugh, and other times, they'll make you cry. Oh, and I know what you're thinking. That's just a boomer. That's just a hunter. That's just a tank. And on the surface, you may be right, but the difference between these fuckers is they're a whole lot more bullshit to deal with. See, that's not just a boomer. He's also a spitter. Basically, a big walking poisonous stink bomb. Oh, and the gutter runners, oh, no, now these assholes are actually terrifying because they disappear and then pounce right back on you if you don't take them down in one shot. Yeah, the rattling gunner, uh... Unless you're playing Resident Evil. Zombies can't hold guns, so he's a new one. Storm Furman and their patrols can be summed up in one word. Fuck. And the Rat Ogre is... Honestly, it, it really is just a tank. Oh yeah, and the Pack Masters, yeah. Fuck Pack Masters, their range is bullshit. So you got the rats, and you also got each character you play as. And great thing about this is, each character has a unique set of weapons, both melee and ranged. This is a big deal, because playing as a different character is really more than just a skin. It even changes the height of the camera. Playing as a dwarf and then replaying the same level as a mage feels that much more different. And not just because the AI director is dynamically changing the spawning rate of rats or the placement of items. Oh, and, and the level you're saying? That isn't character based, it's account based. Also, levels don't really mean anything beyond how many trinkets you can hold and really just measure how long you've been playing the game. Along with each character having different weapons, they also have their own personalities and voices which are portrayed through a plethora of insults, compliments, and general banter amongst each other. And... Elf best girl because she insults everyone all the time. Down here, Lumberfoot! But more importantly, the only other choice was this slab of pavement. Whew, and damn, does this game have some good sound design. From stabs to smacks, to screams and wax, it's all just... Nice! Oh, and man, this soundtrack. Whew, this soundtrack. I 
love it. It pretty much perfectly sets the tone of the game and makes Uber Sprite's gloomy environments and visual aesthetic feel so much more atmospheric and immersive. It helps establish the dark setting that is Warhammer Fantasy, something that graphical fidelity alone just can't do. And well, despite me saying that, even graphically, Vermintide is on par, if not better looking, than a majority of games that came out this year. But while the game does look great, I really can't run it on high settings, or on medium, or even low, for that matter. I don't think it's my computer specs, to be honest. The game's just unoptimized. I mean, sure, the game looks great and plays great, but if my frame rate goes all the way down to 20 in big battles, and then all the way back up to 60 when there aren't any Skaven on the screen, then I don't think that's my PC's fault. That's got to be some insane memory leakage right there. I mean, the game slows down and speeds up at certain points. It's all over the place. This game, the engine, something's just unstable because it crashes without warning. And yes, I understand this is only the first week, but that's why they had a beta. But the game runs even worse now than it did during the beta. During the beta, the game had three maps and in the full game, it has 13 total. You quickly unlock all of them by progressing through a series of three chapters until you reach the 13th map, after which a short ending cutscene plays where they plug some future DLC. Now that's not to imply that all these maps are bad. They're all fine, and I like some more than others. <clears throat> uh, Gardens of more. What's dumb is the objectives you do on them vary from put things here, go here, hit this, wait a few minutes, protect this, escape. Yeah, it's repetitive, but not tedious. And I understand that they're just a means to the end for the gameplay, so that's fine. But what's not fine is building up a final boss battle, and then all you do to defeat that boss is the exact same objectives you've been doing for the entire game. It's lazy, bad design, and I hate it. To be frank, Vermintide just has so many technical issues that are really holding it back from being a fantastic game. For instance, I understand that this is a co-op game, so you should be playing with your friends or other players, but that doesn't give the developers an excuse to make the bot AI bumfuck retarded. I don't understand how you can create an extremely intelligent Skaven AI, but then just completely forget to make the bot AI even remotely competent. How could this have been overlooked? <laughs> wow, here comes the staple of my life. Fucking glitches, graphical errors, but surprisingly, no T-poses. Sometimes rats will just spawn under the map, and sometimes the map just won't render. There are spots where you walk and the map just de-renders around you. How? How? Rats will literally spawn inside of walls and just stay stuck in them. Enemies will stare at you and not move. There's one spot on supply and demand where the rat ogre was stuck during the beta and after the beta in the exact same spot. Oh, and man, this game's riot dolls. This is a whole other level of what the fuck is going on. I have seen my fair share of glitches, but holy shit, this is definitely a new one. Honestly, I hope you don't fix them, Fat Shark. Because this is the funniest shit I've ever seen in my life. It doesn't really affect gameplay, and I just love staring at them. Okay, now, here's a weird one for me, because it's about the game's difficulty. Actually, to put it more appropriately, the game's balance. So, Vermintide has five difficulties, ranging from easy all the way up to cataclysm. I'm usually someone who settles for the mid-ground, and then if I feel like challenging myself, I'll put the difficulty up one. What I find stupid is that the only thing that really makes hard hard is the amount of damage you take. In fact, that is pretty much the only difference on every difficulty. On easy, pretty much everything dies in one hit, whereas on cataclysm, it takes about three. Everything in between, about two. As you respectively go up the difficulties, enemies do more and more damage to you. And on Cataclysm, enemies will basically three-shot you. Now, enemies having more health and doing more damage isn't a bad thing, but the fact that that's all the difficulties really adjust is kind of stupid. What that means is that you're gonna get the same amount of Skaven enemies on Cataclysm as you do on Easy. Now, with just normal Slave Skaven, not really a big deal. But when you get two or three specials spawning and locking down everyone on easy, I mean, really, it's pretty unforgiving. And that's not even the strangest thing. The Rat Ogre, it feels like it has the exact same amount of health on every difficulty. I mean, on the hardest difficulty, it makes sense for the thing to be a brick wall, but not on easy. Every other enemy in the game has reduced health on lower difficulties. Why doesn't the Rat Ogre? And now for my final qualm with this game, which I have neglected to talk about thus far, is the loot system. Boy oh boy, do I despise Vermintide's loot system. When I first saw that the loot system in Vermintide was gonna be completely based off of RNG dice rolls, well, I, I didn't like that at all. It initially reminded me of the crates you usually see in other free-to-play game environments. 
the kind only capable of being unlocked by using real-world money. So I assumed that there might be a way to increase the chance of getting better loot by purchasing higher dice rolls via microtransactions. So, you can imagine how relieved I felt when I learned that higher grade dice are required by just playing the game. But see, what's even more surprising is that getting your hands on those higher chance die is actually somewhat of a challenge. See, scattered and hidden throughout a majority of the levels are a multitude of tomes and grimoires. But if you can't find them after the first few times you play through a level, you could just look up where they are in some wiki just like I did. But it's the thought that counts, right? Okay, what I love about these books are the high risk, high reward gameplay they offer. Tomes, well, they aren't that bad because all they do is take up a healing slot. You can just switch them out for a potion, chug it, then pick the book right back up. Grimoires, on the other hand, when you pick those fuckers up, you better be ready for your rectum to clench up nice and tight. Cause say goodbye to a part of your health bar when you're holding that thing. Ew, chaos magic. Oh, and make sure it doesn't slip out of your hands because you can't pick that fucker back up. Having to fight off a wave of Skaven with what little is left of your health bar when carrying these things is nerve wracking. This kind of pseudo-dynamic increase in difficulty is something that you don't see implemented well in many, if not any other games. And because of that, I love it. Sounds like I like all this stuff so far, right? Well, here's the part I don't like. After all the Skaven are dead, and you've reached the wagon in a mangled but living state, you still have to pray to the gods of RNG. I mean, if you bring every single optional objective to the end of the level, you've got a pretty good chance that five out of your seven dice will land face up. But the fact that there's still a chance you could end up with all but the Grimoire dice face down and only get some white trash out of it, it just makes me want to cry and kill myself. <laughs> That's not to say that it isn't an amazing feeling to grab an orange the first time you see one, but a loot system based entirely off of RNG dice rolls? I'm... I'm just not a fan. It's like when I play an MMO and beat a raid boss, I expect to get some high-grade loot at the end. But instead, when I play Vermintide and beat the level, sometimes I don't even get a green. I just get a white item. It happened so many times, even when I got all the tomes and grimoires to the end of the level. And yes, I understand that higher difficulty means better loot, but I don't want to feel obligated to play on those higher difficulties knowing that there's a chance I might not even get good loot if all my dice land face down. It just feels like a waste of time and completely unrewarding. Hell, anything could make this system better. How about just giving me the ability to pick which item I want to receive, and then having the role dictate the rarity of it. At least I get something that I know I want, instead of getting something for a class that I really don't play that much. Or you could have the difficulty you play on dictate what grade of loot you get. And then the amount of tomes or grimoires you bring to the end of the level could give you more random choices to pick from. I mean, Anything but this current system is better in my eyes. The only thing that really makes oranges better than whites isn't the damage. It's the fact that those weapons have three abilities. And, well, they look cooler. And abilities always randomize on every weapon. So if higher grade items were made easier to get, it wouldn't really take the fun and excitement out of getting them. You'd instead be trying to find a weapon with a good set of abilities, rather than just hoping to get a weapon at all. Pretty much, playing Vermintide is like having sex. While you're playing it, you're having so much fun, and it feels so good. You keep going faster and faster, trying to reach the end of the level, and just when you're about to bust a nut, a Skaven bites your fucking dick off. You have no orgasm, and feel nothing but pain. Vermintide comes really close to being a fantastic game, and if it weren't for all the small, negative, technical aspects bogging down the game, it probably would be. And all of them are things that can be fixed by changing non-fundamental aspects of the core gameplay experience. I can see them optimizing the game at the very least, but changing the loot system to be more generous to players like me? I really doubt it. If you want to buy Vermintide, you have to know a few things. One, have a group of friends to play with. Two, get ready to get your ass handed to you. Three, ignore the loot system. Four, find a way to abuse the loot system and farm oranges. Five, Tell Fat Shark to fix their shit.